scientist is about to embark on a journey back in time. 13 and a half billion years to the very beginning of the universe. James Webb Telescope just announced a bizarre discovery before the Big Bang. Is the James Webb Space Telescope breaking the Big Bang paradigm? Researchers are convinced that JWST has glimpsed an unexpected population of galaxies in the early universe. Now they're trying to decide what this means for the Big Bang theory and our understanding of the cosmos. If you ask any scientist about the origin of the universe, the Big Bang is going to be their most likely response. It wasn't always this way, and it won't be forever, but our observable universe is made up of stars, galaxies, and a cosmic web of large-scale structure separated by enormous expanses of empty space. A hot, dense, homogeneous matter and radiation-filled state devoid of galaxies, stars, or even atoms at the outset gave way to an expanding and cooling universe. A mere 100 years of research have revealed that the universe we live in today did not exist 13.8 billion years ago. Nonetheless, there are several realities that the wider public and even many scientists fail to grasp. When speaking with scientists and astronomers, the Big Bang is one of the most fascinating topics to bring up. This is due to the fact that the theory explains how the universe got started. However, the event that caused the Big Bang remains a topic of debate among scientists today. This is why the James Webb Telescope has been given the responsibility of uncovering new information about the Big Bang. The JWST made an extremely thrilling discovery, but it was not what scientists had anticipated. So, what did the James Webb Telescope discover? And how does this discovery relate to the Big Bang Theory? This video will explore the shocking discovery made by the James Webb Telescope before the Big Bang. When it comes to the origins of the first stars and galaxies that illuminated the universe, astronomers are still in the dark, but they're getting closer to enlightenment with each new discovery. The $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, has begun science operations in July 2022, and its preliminary observations point in that direction. JWST's vision reaches back into the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, allowing it to obtain more and better data about newborn galaxies than any other facility to date. This is because JWST was designed to glimpse the faint infrared glow of the universe's earliest luminous objects. However, the bounty of intergalactic baby pictures it has yielded has exceeded the wildest expectations of scientists. In a nutshell, the discovery of dozens of candidate galaxies in the early universe defies expectations. For this access to be explained, current cosmological models may need to undergo significant changes. These adjustments may involve rethinking the timing of the first galaxy's formation, the luminosity of the first galaxy's stars, or the possibility that the nature of dark matter and dark energy is even more mysterious than previously thought. Two of the most intriguing candidate early galaxies found by JWST have survived additional analysis, lending credence to the idea that our understanding of the cosmos past is severely lacking. Both galaxies were the oldest ones known at the time of their discovery, predating the Big Bang by a significant margin, 350 and 450 million years respectively. Both Rohan Naidu, now at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Marco Castellano, director of the Astronomical Observatory of Rome in Italy, led separate teams that made the discoveries independently. The two discovery papers, which were first published on the preprint server arxiv.org in late November and October respectively, have now been peer-reviewed and published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. This is more than just a symbolic achievement. Astronomers were worried that the distances to these galaxies had been incorrectly calculated due to early calibration issues with JWST's instruments. However, we can say with very good confidence that calibration is not an issue for these galaxies, Castellano says after a rigorous peer review. It's safe to say they'd make excellent candidates. The problem with calibration have been resolved. However, further observations are required to definitively confirm their previously unattainable distances. Since then, Astronomers have discovered a number of additional candidate early galaxies, some of which appear to date back as far as 200 million years after the Big Bang. No one knew before the launch of JWST if galaxies could form so early in the 13.8 billion year history of the universe, when matter was thought to still be sedulously coalescing into the gravitationally bound clumps required to give birth to large groups of stars. 
At a press conference held by NASA to announce the peer-reviewed validation of the first two candidates, astronomer Garth Illingworth from the University of California, Santa Cruz said, and so we're wondering, do we really understand the early phases of the formation of these galaxies? In the words of one theorist, this has posed a lot of questions for the theorists. One of the most pressing concerns is figuring out how dark matter actually influenced the birth of galaxies. After the Big Bang, the universe was so hot that normal matter could not clump together into large protogalactic clumps due to the force of gravity. Jorge Pararubia, a cosmologist at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, noted that this was not an issue for dark matter, because dark matter does not interact via electromagnetic forces. Instead, gravity is the sole master of this unseen substance, and it was gravity alone that began clumping dark matter into large clumps called halos. In the instance following the Big Bang, when primordial chaos otherwise reigned, we think these dark matter halos acted as gravitational sinks for ordinary matter, setting the stage for the subsequent formation of galaxies in the early universe. The stars they watch over still move in ways that reveal their resilience. Galaxy clusters like our own, majestic but unseen architects of the present-day cosmos, still have such halos surrounding them. The speed with which early galaxies have been discovered by the JWST may be putting our knowledge of how these halos form to the test, and implying that they reached an enormous bulk earlier than expected. The mysterious properties of dark matter themselves may hold the key. Dark matter's simple interactions with itself and normal matter via gravity have been shown by theorists to be sufficient to reproduce the large-scale structure of the universe. However, simplicity is not a guarantee in nature. In reality, dark matter may interact with itself due to a force we don't yet understand, perhaps via a particle that isn't part of the current standard model of physics. This may have accelerated the growth of these halos and provided an explanation for the rapid emergence of large, bright galaxies. On the other hand, maybe these rings were just better at luring in common matter to fuel star formation. Castellano's paper argues that his and Naidu's two candidate galaxies had star formation rates at least 20 times higher than the rate our galaxy is currently producing, roughly one new star per year. For galaxies the size of the Milky Way to form 500 million years after the Big Bang, as suggested by another preprint paper based on data from the JWST, star formation rates would have to be 10 times higher than Castellano's estimates. Perhaps a more likely scenario is that, in the early universe, stars were better able to accumulate mass. This would cause stars to become more massive and bright, making early galaxies more visible to JWST. Circumstantial evidence for the existence of such stars is strong, despite the fact that astronomers have not yet observed one directly. Population 3 stars, having formed from the universal hydrogen and helium gas, would be devoid of heavier elements, allowing them to grow to enormous sizes hundreds of times larger than our Sun. However, like the brightest, shortest candles, these massive stars would have a lifespan of no more than a few million years, making their detection today difficult. However, there is a chance that some of the more distant galaxies already found by JWST, as well as those even more ancient that may still await discovery, contain evidence for Population 3 stars. These stars, which could be responsible for the luminosity of these galaxies, would be much hotter and brighter than the subsequent Population 2 stars and Population 1 stars, like our Sun, that now populate the modern universe. Taking a rainbow-like spectrum of a galaxy's emitted light to determine which chemical elements are present in its constituent stars is a time-consuming process, but JWST will need to do it to find out for sure. Whelan suggests that a helium spectral feature that can only form inside stars hotter than about 100,000 degrees Celsius is a clear signature of Population 3 stars. This kind of follow-up monitoring will start soon. In order to further investigate a select group of early galaxy candidates discovered in the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science, or KIRS, survey, led by Jehan Kartel Tepe of Rochester Institute of Technology, his team has been granted time on the James Webb Space Telescope. High redshifts, the result of the cosmic expansion stretching out the wavelengths of their light, are a defining characteristic of such candidates. Because of this, Cartel Tepe's spectroscopic follow-up is not only an essential probe of the galaxy's stellar populations, but also an additional reality check of their cosmic ages. By taking these measurements, astronomers can hopefully learn more about things like star ages and the rates at which they form. 
The program will use eight hours of JWST time to obtain spectra of three target galaxies, and it will not begin until late December at the earliest. It is anticipated that there will be a proliferation of similar initiatives. Even though it may seem impossible, astronomers are still trying to figure out why there are so many galaxy candidates in the early universe. Because of the dust in their atmospheres, the light from some of these galaxies will appear red-shifted and distant, when in reality, they are much closer. Yet, initial follow-up of one of Castellanos and Naidu's galaxies using the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, in Chile, suggested little evidence for such high-dust content. In Cycle 1 of JWST's science mission, which begins in July 2020 and ends in June 2023, it is possible that additional follow-up observations of galaxies like these will be made. More interesting results may occur in its second year of science, Cycle 2, for which astronomers can now propose programs by a deadline of January 27, 2023. The requests for spectroscopic follow-up with JWST are expected to dominate those for distant galaxies in Cycle 2 because of how important it is. The issue is very real. Where did all of these brilliant ideas come from? There was no mention of them in the book. What's happening here is so important that we must figure it out. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about these astonishing discoveries made by the James Webb Space Telescope? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.